Hey guys, it's Jesse, and in this video, we are going to be checking out the latest Skube from X-Man. This is the update to the very popular Wingy Skube. This is the Wingy V2. So first off, just taking a quick look at the box, we get a little bit of a tease as to what kind of features are gonna be in this cube, as well as, of course, the very nice X-Men logo. I think this is probably my favorite cubing logo, honestly, I think it's really clean. But enough about the box, let's see what's inside. So we are immediately greeted with, it looks like a little accessories slash pamphlet container. We get our little screwdriver, as well as the card and just more information on the puzzle. All right, so here we are. Visually, the puzzle looks very similar to the V1. It still has that same concave design. This is my personal favorite for Skube. A lot of other Skubes have tried alternate designs to improve grip, but I think this one's honestly the best. So let's just jump right into some turns here. Let's see how this cube feels. I have a uh, pretty terrible skewed finger tricks. Hope you can bear with me. Yeah, I actually really like the way this feels though. It's uh, it's very, very smooth. It's got kind of that signature like silky smooth feel from X-Men. It really does feel a lot like the Tornado Cubes. You can tell it's the same type of plastic and everything and just overall feels very similar. Uh, I, I don't think the magnets are really that strong here, but the cube feels very, very controllable and stable. I think the stability really just comes from the solid design. It doesn't even feel like magnets are terribly necessary here. Yeah, the cube really feels great. I guess we can do some corner cutting tests here. Uh, let's see, I don't really know how to test corner cutting on a skew, I guess just like that, something like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels good. I don't know how essential that really is, but it feels fine to me. Let's also go ahead and take a look at the pieces here. This is probably where most of the changes are gonna be apparent. So this is what the center looks like. We have kind of our main like torpedo anchor in here. Looks like there's also a little bits of plastic kind of sticking out from the side here. I believe this latches under the corners. And then it looks like we do have some grooves here as well. But overall, nothing too crazy from this center piece. And then in the corner design here, we kind of have like a two pronged base here. Here. We've got like this bit of plastic that's flaring out from the side and you can see how this part is going to interact with the center like this. And again, we do have some grooves right along here. These corners here that aren't connected to the core, if we pop these caps off, I don't think there's really going to be anything under here. Oh, actually there is. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can read this text. I can only read it unless I get it in the light just right. So I don't know if you can see it, but it just says rotate to adjust. Yeah, so I'm assuming that this is going to control magnet strength. So it looks like if you rotate to the left, so this way, it's going to increase the magnet strength and rotating it to the right will decrease it. From here, if this is setting one, and then we have two, three, four, five. Yeah, so five settings. So I'll just keep it on that middle one for right now. All right, so when we open up one of these corners that is connected, to the core, you're gonna see the same type of adjustment system as from the Tornado V2. This dial here with the numbers, this is just going to control your spring compression and then for actual tensioning, then you just use the screw. Unlike the Tornado V2, which had a rivet and you had to tension it using this dial. So I'm not seeing any magnets in these corners. So yeah, it looks like if you want to adjust magnet strength, you use the non-connected corners and then if you want to adjust the spring compression, then you use the connected corners. So one thing to note with this included screwdriver, I just tried to adjust the tension with this standard like black plastic tip that comes on it, and it really does not work that well. You have to push in really hard to get it to turn, and it's already starting to wear away at the tip. Instead, just pull out the bottom here, and you will see more bits in here, and you absolutely should be using this metal one right here. This one has a much pointier tip and works very, very well for adjusting the screw. In here, you'll also find this tool right here, which will allow you to adjust the spring compression. So we put this tool on, and then this is gonna fit right into these two holes right here, which you can use to adjust like this. So now we're back on one. One is going to be the least compressed, and if we go up to five, that's gonna be the most compressed. So I'm gonna go ahead and set all of these to five, and we'll see how that feels. All right, so let's see if I can notice uh, much of a difference here. Okay, yeah, there is a little bit of a difference, but it's not too noticeable. I mean, those tensions were on three by default, so going up to five isn't that different, but it does feel a bit tighter. Corner cutting feels a little bit harsher. Uh, doesn't want to corner cut quite as much. Yeah. 
the cube is starting to like fly out of my hands now <laughs> as I'm trying to do algs. It just feels a lot more stiff, a lot more tight. So I'm gonna do the opposite now. I'm gonna set it to one. All right, we are back to one now. Oh yeah, much, much faster. It, yeah, this is almost like uncontrollable now though. So now I wanna try setting all of the magnets in the corners to the strongest setting and see how much of a difference that makes. So I think we're gonna wanna rotate everything here to the left, all right? Okay, I think that also definitely made a difference. There's much more of a definitive click now, I think. But I actually really like how the cube is feeling right now. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people start switching to this, and I think this is just going to kind of be probably the best mid-range option. I don't exactly know what the price of this is gonna be, but I can almost guarantee that it's gonna be a decent amount lower than the Gans cube. So I think this is really going to dominate that mid-range market. It's really nice to see a cube with some more updated customization features, and I'm very excited to see what this cube is gonna be capable of in the right hands. Definitely not my hands because I suck at skew. But anyways, if you'd like to pick one up for yourself, definitely check out the link in the description. And let us know in the comments if you are planning on getting this cube or if you've already gotten it and what you think about it. Anyways, that's about it for the video. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.